It's always fun to read the chat without context. Somebody wrote, 46-year-old boomer in regards to something I said in the opening segment. I hope that it was in regards to me saying that the NXT television show sucked. Because it would be quite the irony for a 46-year-old to be called a boomer in regards to that. Seeing as the median age of the viewership of Wednesday's NXT was 62 years old. How old? 62. My God. Me thinking that show sucks is actually proof I'm not a boomer. Every other day, like a week ago, I was saying, what is the audience for this show? Like, who would watch this NXT 2.0? I did not think the answer would be 62-year-old people. Well, Matt Nothing Locke's against them or anything the like that, but... You know. I would just think, like, if you were 62, it's like you'd see through all of this stupidity, but apparently not. When I'm 62... I want to watch a show like NXT 2.0 and go, this show sucks. The other show is much better. Yeah, but anyway, maybe, those, maybe those older folks are trying to figure out a way that they could go to bed in a non-narcotic form. So they just flip on NXT, fall asleep, and two hours for NXT in the ratings book, baby. Nyla, and Brian goes, no. And you go, why is Mike booking that? I'm not booking it. I'm asking a question. All right, calm down. So Sorry. the NXT numbers were down in most age groups. The exception, over 50. Yeah, because the <laughs> median age was 62. But anyway, you know what's funny about this number is... Uh, I'm feeling 62 right now. I this, calm down. This NXT 2.0, I just... It's just like, who Awful. in God's name... I, I mean, how many times have I say it? Who is watching this show besides 62-year-olds? The answer is nobody. But, <laughs> Dead people. You know, yeah, there was, there was strong competition. But you know what everyone's forgetting when they talk about this strong competition? What's that? For two years on Wednesdays, there has been one thing after another, whether it's elections or, you know, whatever, and that stuff never affected NXT. Now, all of a sudden, oh, this greatly affected NXT. It affected it a little bit, but this NXT audience, traditionally, this is not an audience that is affected by other stuff on television. AEW was all the time. But NXT had the stable, we're going to watch this damn show like aliens could invade Manhattan. We're still going to watch NXT. So the issue is the show. I think we all know that. Let's not, let's not pretend here. Do I got to talk well, about it? Oh, I don't know if everybody knows that, Brian. You might have to explain it to some people that, that think this is high art that they're doing. I mean, art is subjective, so it is high art. Mm. I don't like the art, but it's... It's art. We had Mandy Rose beating Ember Moon. It's all about putting Mandy, JC, and Gigi on TV in 85 segments where they do a lot of posing. Because, like, art. in every other company, including the main roster, these, these women are, like, powerful, strong wrestlers. Here, it's like, we got to get the best-looking ones on television. That's the most important thing. We got L.A. Knight uh, beating Odyssey Jones, which actually surprised me because I thought that... Uh, I thought for sure they'd put Odyssey Jones over, but they didn't. And uh, this Andre Chase, the, he's either the teacher or whatever he is. Where's Waldo? He came out and held down uh, Odyssey's foot, so they're going to have a, a, a compelling feud. It's a gulak in a sweater. We had a bunch of interviews with Grimes and O'Reilly and Von Wagner and oh. Ciampa. So the big news is Halloween Havoc is October 26th, and they're already doing Braun Breaker. And Tommaso Ciampa. So I'm sure the breaker is going to be the NXT champion, like lickety split, as they say. And uh, they set that up. Joe Gacy's doing his gimmick, which, whatever, bro. I am a boomer. But, like, it's clear to me, I was ridiculed. Why? I was ridiculed when talking about Joe Gacy. Because on a show a while ago, I was talking about how, uh, what's his face, American Top Team? Dan uh, Lambert? Dan Lambert. Where I said that Dan Lambert and Joe Gacy had the same gimmick. And everybody oh. was all over me. Oh, it's a total opposite gimmick, Brian. Well, listen, if you want to think that, you can. But to me, they're doing the exact same gimmick, just two different ways. Lambert's out there just flat out lambasting them, quite frankly. And Joe Gacy is the guy who's like a total... Making fun of the woke whatever, and he's just like, that's totally not who the character is supposed to be. Am I wrong about this? 
Dan Lambert's doing a bitter old professional wrestling fan who's obviously calling from Cornette and taking from other people to come up with some of this stuff. And for those people, it's truth. So he gets to speak that. When it comes to what WWE, uh, they're, they're doing with Gacy, it's like... What prism are they looking at him in? They're looking, you know, it, it, it's how this is being presented. I mean, to me, he's a heel. There's no doubt in my mind he's going heel. There's no question about that, even though he technically hasn't done anything heelish yet. But that's that's part of the whole thing. But where can you go with this? How is this going to make? I mean, I, I to me, that one week of they were in the New York Post talking about woke wrestler has now got them way too invested in believing in this character right now at least to me i know they got to push these new ones but what is this guy other than a douchey heel at the end of the day i don't know who this plays to oh lord uh back in a moment observer live if you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and 99 cents per month you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.